So, are you in the market for a chronograph watch, but you're trying to look at something a little different from some of the more popular models like the Omega Speedmaster or the Tudor Black Bay chronograph, or if you even have the money, the Rolex Daytona? Well, today what we're going to be doing is having a look at some unique chronographs that if you're looking for a new chronograph watch, you probably could consider. Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to the Vintage Warlock channel. I hope you are all safe and well. And today we are going to be looking at the chronographs. Um, not just any chronograph in particular, but the chronographs that I find unique and interesting. Now, these aren't an endorsement to buy watches. However, it is just to point out to you that there's a lot more in this marketplace, especially with chronographs, than the typical watches that you tend to get, such as the Rolex Daytona or the Omega Speedmaster. So let's have a look at this list. It's in not really a, a particular order. Um, I have separated quartz from mechanical and I have tried to put it in terms of a price order, I suppose. But the prices sort of fluctuate and it also depends on whether you buy this brand new, if you buy this grey market or if you buy this uh, on the second hand market in stores like eBay and places like that. So without any further ado, let's get on with the list. Now this list is long enough as it is, but I have missed out a few big brands. And the reason why I've missed it out is because otherwise this list would take all day. We would be here for absolutely hours discussing it. Um, but also there are um, other watches that I've seen that I think just sort of edge it out when it comes to interesting. So you've got brands such as Certina, um, which are again part of the Swatch Group. You've got the Hamilton Jazzmaster. You've got lots of different Hamilton um, style watches. You've got their aviation watches um, as well, which are all uh, mechanical chronographs. Well, most of them are. You've got the Seiko Presage range. They do have chronographs on there as well. And obviously you've got Grand Seiko as well, which offers something a little bit different. Um, you've also got Bull watches. You've got Sin. You've got Bell and Ross. There are so many different watch brands to choose from when it comes to chronograph and each one of them has a very unique take on the chronograph watch um, I think it's worth having a look at all of these watches I had to round off this list with what I found appealing or what I found interesting um, but at the same time there are plenty of watch brands that I've missed out there are 12 watches on this list. I think this is evenly split as well between quartz and mechanical automatic watches. Um, and be sure to stick around to the end because I have a bonus watch on this list as well. One that many people don't consider when they're looking at chronographs, but I think it's well worth a look. So make sure you stick to the end for that one. So before we jump into the list, I want to uh, make a disclaimer. First of all, the prices are accurate as of, or the price ranges on some of these are accurate as of September 2022. So dependent on whether some of these models have been discontinued, some of them already have been, they may be harder to get a hold of, or they might change in price as time goes on. It just depends on the watch market. As we all know, the watch market can be a bit of a roller coaster at times. Um, secondly, is that I don't have hands-on with all of these watches. If I have had hands-on with them, I can give you a bit more of background and I'll let you know in each entry. But if I haven't had hands-on with them as well, um, and I don't say it, just assume that I've not had hands-on with them. I'm just speculating on how the watch will look and fit on wrist based on the specifications and the pictures of the watch as well. And finally, the one brand that I won't be including on this list today is Casio. Casio Edifice range has a huge amount of chronographs and actually the reason why I'm missing them out of this is because I am compiling a different list that's going to be specifically down to the Casio Edifice range. So I wanted to have something a little bit different today and go outside of Casio uh, for this list. But first of all, let's start off with quartz because I feel that that is the best area to get into especially if you're new to watches or if you don't have a particularly large budget but you still want to get a good chronograph on your wrist and I feel as if the best chronograph for me to kick off this list with is going to be a Seiko and it's going to be the Seiko Flightmaster or the Flighty as it's known by quite a few reviewers it's the SNA411. 
Now, what can I say about the Seiko SNA411 or the Flighty that hasn't been said before by other YouTubers? This is an incredible value watch. It has domed hardlex crystal. It's got the 7T62 quartz movement, stainless steel bracelet and case. Um, it's got the alarmed chronograph movement, um, 200 meters of water resistance, and obviously it's a fully made in Japan uh, watch. This watch comes with so many different added features and so many different functionalities that if you are, if you like a clean dial, you're not going to like it. It is genuinely uh, stress inducing. But if you want something that gives you maximum features, then the Seiko Chronograph is one of the best, if not the best that you can get today. Unfortunately, because of the watch being discontinued, prices are starting to creep up. I've seen them online from anywhere between 150 to 300 pounds in the UK, and they they are with varied conditions. So you've got some that are brand new, which are obviously going to be more expensive, and you've got some that are well used that obviously won't be. I think as supply tends to dwindle on these, as it's not being made anymore, I think you're going to find it harder and harder to grab a hold of one. But it's definitely one to put on your list if you haven't got a lot in your budget but you want to get a great watch to begin with. But if you would like a watch with arguably better specs than the Flighty, but you're still looking at a cheap quartz movement, something that's going to be rugged, reliable, but will last you for a long time and doesn't take a lot of tinkering, then we're going to stay in Japan, but we're going to hop over to Citizen and have a look at one of its newer chronograph watches. So this model, which is the Citizen CA7090, is without doubt, probably my pick of choice for watch noobs. So people who are really new to the watch space, they want to have a chronograph on their wrist, but they don't know too much about movements. They want to have a quartz movement that's reliable and they're interested in something that's potentially a little bit different. Now, I love this Citizen series. I think it looks incredible. I love the integrated bracelet. The fact that this is titanium as well. This has a sapphire crystal over the top of it and it has a circular date window at the three o'clock. But because of the way that the markers are, it just doesn't take away from the symmetry of the watch at all. I think this watch is really interesting. Now retailing for a little bit under £300 which puts it well within the same price level as the Flighty, you've got a couple of different colorways to choose from. There's black, there's a couple of shades of blue, you've got a slightly darker blue and then a slightly lighter blue and then you've got this really interesting sort of pinky red almost like a crimson dial as well. Of course, with this watch, it gives you 100 meters of water resistance. The case diameter is slightly smaller with 43 mil. The bandwidth is 22 mil, but because it's an integrated bracelet, you don't really need to worry about that at all. And then obviously the crowning jewel with Citizen is that you get the eco drive movement, which in itself is an interesting movement. So for those of you who are particularly new to the world of horology and don't know much about EcoDrive, the basic concept behind EcoDrive is that it's solar powered, which means that you never have to take the back off to replace the battery. If the watch is running low on battery, the ticks will slightly alter a little bit to give you a bit of a warning. And then you just leave it in sunlight um, for a few hours and it charges up and then you're good to go for however many months. It's usually around 180 days, I think, um, that it needs charging for or that it needs putting into the light. I think it's a great innovation uh, by Citizen. I think it's really interesting that they've started to um, become really well known within the watch space for doing eco drive watches. And I also think that having a watch that is good looking like this offers a quartz 2.0 really if you think about it a new innovation within watchmaking but also gives you something that looks good at the same time really is um, an interesting point and I feel that Citizen are on to a winner with this model you can probably expect to see a review of this one coming up soon <laughs> Citizen also have the five-year guarantee, which I think makes this watch an incredible buy as well, especially when, you're, when you've got a guarantee that's that good. But moving on to the next watch on this list, and we're going to have a look at a watch that I own. It is the Bulliver Lunar Pilot, which I think is a fantastic alternative if you are really craving a Speedmaster, but just can't justify the expense. Don't bother going for the uh, Omega Moon Swatch. It is a piece of junk compared to the Bulliver Luna Pilot. And with the scalpers online, this watch still comes in a little bit cheaper. 
Now, Bulliver, Bulliver Lunar Pilot. What have I said about them that I haven't already said? In fact, I can't think of anything new to add to it. Yes, it's a big watch. It's 45 millimeter case. So really the caveat with this watch is you have to have a seven and a half inch wrist or seven and a quarter inch wrist or bigger to be able to pull this off. It comes on a canvas strap, a uh, leather band and a bracelet as well. I would recommend that you wear it on the canvas because I think it hugs the wrist pretty well. 50 meters of water resistant, anti-reflective reflective sapphire coating but the jewel in the crown of the boulevard is the movement it's the high performance quartz technology it is 262 kilohertz vibration frequency with an accuracy of plus or minus 10 seconds a year that is a phenomenal movement again this is quartz 2.0 it's part of the citizen group so it's part of their innovation and this watch just adds incredible value for the money as you know, this watch uh, comes with a huge amount of history. It's actually been to the moon as well, which is something that you can't say for other space affiliated watches or NASA affiliated watches that aren't the Omega Speedmaster. So this watch itself offers incredible value for money and it's definitely on this list for a good reason. So the next watch on this list is another watch that may be discontinued. I haven't seen any wording of it on the official website. However, it is readily available through um, Grey Market and eBay. It is the Mido Ocean Star, uh, the, specifically the Captain Chronograph Ocean Star. So, of course, being part of the Swatch Group, Mido can offer incredible value for money. The watch itself isn't mechanical or automatic like the diver that I have at the moment, which is, again, part of the Ocean Star range. This one is a quartz movement, and it's powered by the ETA Caliber G10211. It's a 44mm case size with a thickness of 13 mil of course it's got the things that you would expect such as the sapphire crystal covering the dial 200 meters of water resistance um, but it's also got additional features as well such as a date display at the four o'clock position too this watch has an interesting design it may not be for everyone but if you're looking at getting a swiss made watch on your wrist and you're looking for something that's a bit unique and different from what everyone else may have this is definitely one to consider you can expect to pay between 250 to 500 pounds for the Mido. So next on this list is the Luminox and it's the Pacific Diver Chronograph. This is the last quartz movement that I have on this list. So I have a bit of a soft spot for Luminox. I think they do incredible value for money and they make some of the best looking military watches that you'll find. All of their watches look robust. They look like they can take a hell of a beating and the Pacific Diver Chronograph 44 millimeter is exactly the same. Now the prices on this range between 599 pounds to 699 pounds. And I think that basically depends on whether you're going to get it on the rubber strap or if you're gonna get it on the bracelet. Both of them look pretty good. I quite like the look of some of the unique ones like the orange dial with the orange band or some of the green dials that you've got as well. They're quite interesting. But you've also got, you know, steel bracelet or black version or a black bezel with a blue face. And you've also got a, a, a black sort of carbon version as well. This watch has a few um, unique aspects to it compared to some of the other watches on this list already so yes it's a swiss quartz movement it's either going to be eta solita or ronda powered quartz i'm not sure which one it doesn't uh, speculate on the website it's a large boy it's 44 mil but not as big as the as the lunar pilot but this watch has tritium as its loom which has a constant glow of up to 25 years now to find tritium in a watch the only other company that i can think of that currently do that is the ball watch company um, where their watches are considerably more expensive than a few hundred pounds uh, this is 200 meter water resistant obviously it's a dive it's a diver's watch it's a iso certified diver's watch that's military issued um, sapphire crystal and anti-reflective coating over the front it's got a screw down crown double security gas and crown protection and it's obviously the construction is 3-1L stainless steel on the case and the bracelet if you opt for the bracelet version. I also find the bezel with uh, 
Luminox watch is really interesting. So this one has the stainless steel case, but it's covered by a Carbonox unidirectional bezel, which they class as a vital instrument for any diver. Obviously, you can do all the usual that you would do with that bezel, but um, with bezels that help you with timekeeping and the rest of it. However, I think this one is a little bit more precise, maybe, and it's made with military sensibility in mind. I think I'm going through a little bit of a military watch phase at the moment, and uh, as such, this watch really sticks out to me the only thing that might be off-putting for you guys is you would expect to have a 22 mil um, lug width if it's a 44 mil case not so with this one it is a 24 millimeter lug width so the bracelet is probably going to be pretty savage unless it tapers dramatically from when it's on the uh, wrist thing to add with luminux watches as well is that they don't tend to hold their value overly well on the second hand market so if you're dying for this watch but can't quite stretch yourself to the 599 or the 699 pounds that it's stipulating for have a look on ebay i'm sure that you'll be able to find this for a pretty decent price so that does the quartz section of this video um already it's been a while hasn't it <laughs> So I'm going to do a little bit of a roundup again uh, because we're now going to move on to the automatic and mechanical watches. So the watches that aren't powered by quartz. And just to recap all the watches that I've mentioned so far, you've had the Seiko Flightmaster, the Citizen Watch, the CL7090, the Bull of a Lunar Pilot, the Mido Captain Ocean Star, uh, and of course you've had the Luminux as well, the Pacific diver so out of all of those watches i would probably say the my my personal favorite is going to be the one that i own it's the bull of a lunar pilot i think it's an incredible watch with a huge amount of history and i quite like just the looks and the feel of it when it's on wrist however what i will say is the best value for money if you can find it at a good price and this has to be a caveat with that is that you have to be able to find it at a good price so i'm talking 150 to 200 pounds would be the Seiko Flightmaster or the Flighty. However, the best overall value for watch on here and the best watch for beginners as well. So it's two different categories, but I'm going to count them as the same because it's the same watch. For me, it's the Citizen Chronograph, the CA7090. I think the fact that it's titanium, has sapphire crystal, and it has its eco drive movement makes it a fantastic star to watch if you are new to watch collecting. But I think all of those features as well make it an incredible value for money watch as well. Citizen have been on a bit of a renaissance recently. They've been adding new watches to their lineup and they've become a little more interesting than the boring sort of watches that you used to class them as having, you know, way back when. Um, so yeah, for this what for this uh quartz list at least anyway the citizen chrono i think is overall the best value for money and probably the best watch for a starter however my personal favorite is still going to be the Bulliver lunar pilot so now that we've done quartz it is time to move over to the mechanical and automatic section now what i've done for this list is i've actually combined the automatic and the mechanicals together in one list and that's because a couple of these are mechanical but the majority of them are are automatic and I didn't want to confuse things even more by creating a third category within this list so I think it's easier to have quartz on one side and then mechanical slash automatic on the next so first watch on this list is a mechanical watch it has again bags of history it is a military style watch but it's very classy it is the Seagull 1963 so I think the Seagull 1963 makes a fantastic first watch for somebody who wants a mechanical movement, doesn't want to pay through the nose from it, but wants to understand a little bit more about horology. I also think that it's an incredible bargain buy, really, to add to anyone's watch collection, to be honest. I used to own the 38mm acrylic crystal version of this watch, and I sold it, and I regret selling it, and I want to buy another one now. Um, this watch now comes in 38mm, you can get it in 40mm, and you can get it in 42 mil. The original version I had was the acrylic crystal. However, it now comes in sapphire as well. This watch has a really rich and illustrious history. It was part of a military issue, uh, Project 304, by the Chinese military. And it was eventually named as part of the Siegel Company. Um, and the movement itself is based on the Venus movement. 
Today the movement is known as the Siegel ST19. I'm going to talk about the dimensions of the watch that I owned, which was the 38mm, because that is the version that I would recommend that anyone that has my size wrist or around my size wrist of 7.25 inches gets. So it's 38mm in diameter, the lug width is 18mm and it's got a 14mm thickness. Again, you can either get acrylic or sapphire crystal with this one. So the next watch on this list is a huge jump in price um, of almost 1500 pounds now that's brand new you can get it for uh, well under a thousand pounds if you are buying second hand but i think that jump in price sort of shows that we're looking at a different caliber of watch now we're looking at the more premium end of the market but it also shows the incredible value for money that the previous watches on this list had as well now we are going over to switzerland and we are having a look at an oris watch and it is in particular the chrono oris or the chronoris so in my opinion the chronoris is a, an incredibly underrated watch I think it's good looking I think it comes in a number of different colorways that make it really appealing and it's a really good retro reissue that offers something a little different now there are two different versions of the watch that you can get I think there are actually three different versions you've got one that's just a normal sort of stopwatch type scenario that doesn't have any sub dials on it you've also got a full chronograph version which is the limited edition and you've also got a um, version where you've got a separated seconds hand sort of at the top but I think because of the way that it's designed it looks quite unique when you compare it to other chronographs on this list. Seriously though when it comes to picking the Oris I would just choose whichever one that you like. I think they're all equally great value for money on this list and they range between 1500 brand new as I mentioned before to up to 3000 for the full chronograph um, version. My personal pick on here would actually be the three-hander version of it so I'm cheating a little bit on this list but I think it's still a pretty good watch for for the money so my pick is the three-hander version either the black dial the gray dial or the movember edition which has sort of gilt tones to it it's a 39 millimeter case with stainless steel construction sapphire domed crystal on both sides and anti-reflective coating on the uh, on the inside of the watch it's got a water resistance of 100 meters and a strap width of 19 mil so it will be hard to sort of change the straps up unless you buy directly from oris or find somebody who can accommodate with that one on the three hand version the movement that you have is an oris 77 which is based on the solita 201 or 2001 dimensions for that are it says on the website 25.6 millimeters uh, it has 38 hours power reserve and 26 joules and of course it hacks and it hand winds the warranty that you get with oris isn't as good as citizens where you get a five-year warranty it goes up to three years initially it's two years but you've got a a reward scheme that you can join called my oris which can extend your warranty up to three years so we are staying in switzerland and i think we're going to be staying in switzerland now for the remainder of this list the next watch that we're going to be having a look at today is another automatic chronograph movement this is a three sub dial so a six hand movement in total and it's the p it's the prx from tso it is the automatic chronograph version the tso prx is considered by many to have been the hot watch of 2021 and sort of help revitalize and, and kick off the integrated bracelet uh, revival fashion revival that we've seen recently this watch itself has a 60 hour power reserve a diameter of 42 millimeters and it's also got scratch resistant sapphire crystal and ar coating over the front of it um, um, they do have a quick release bracelet on this one. I'm not sure why they bothered. Again, it's integrated. Why do you need to do that? You don't need to do it. The watch itself that I would choose, you've got two versions of the chronograph version. You've got a blue face with white subdials, or you've got a panda version. So a gray sort of whitey gray face with black dials and a bit of gilt thrown in. Um, I think you can guess which one that I like. It is the uh, gray white dial with black subdials with the gilt thrown in. I think that looks really, really good. I think it looks classic actually especially when you're looking at the the watch itself obviously you've got sapphire crystal in front of the case 100 meters water resistant as i mentioned before and a display case back where you can see the movement now the movement itself is really interesting it is the um i think it's called the HMSSD, I think that's what they call it on the website, but it's basically a Valju uh, model, Valju A05H31, and that gives you 60 second chronograph, 30 minutes and 12 hours on there. It's got 27 joules and obviously hacks and hand winds just like any other automatic watch on this list.
I think I've been tempted to pull the trigger on this watch a few times, but the reason why I haven't done that as of yet is just because of the case diameter of this one being 42 mil. Now that's usually not that much of a problem, even if you've got a slightly thicker watch, but because of the integrated bracelet, I think that can make it quite a difficult watch to have on wrist and it can overhang a little bit. Quite similar, in fact, to the Mido Ocean Star, the Captain Chronograph that we looked at earlier, which is 44 mil. So it would be a similar case where potentially it could wear much bigger on the wrist than you would want it to. Next watch on this list is another member of the Swatch Group. It is Hamilton. Now they have a few chronographs with Hamilton. However, I've gone for the one that seems to be quite popular at the moment. It is the Intramatic Autumn Auto Chrono that they have. In fact, I'm going to throw out the auto bit and say either the automatic or the mechanical to be whichever one that you would prefer. Um, I quite like the look of this watch. I think it's a good vintage reissue done right. Um, it is that this is actually based on a vintage model that they used to have as well with the Hamilton. Um, and the price itself ranges from £1,800 up to £2,050, dependent on whether you're getting mechanical or whether you're going to get the automatic version. So I own the Hamilton Khaki Field automatic version, which I think is a dressier watch. I think, as I said in my video before, which I'll link to at the end of this video, it is an explorer on a budget. And I think uh, the Hamilton retro reissue is a racing chronograph that's vintage, that's done well on a good budget as well. So if it was me on an ideal world, I would actually choose the mechanical version. It has no date window, and I also don't mind the fact that it's mechanical as well. I would go for the black face with the white subdials. I think that color is really hot. And I would actually go for the leather strap, not the mesh strap. And I think it's because the mesh strap will, will bobble at the bottom, and I think it would become quite annoying after a while. And the leather straps that you get from Hamilton are generally pretty good as well. The specifications are all really similar to the Tissot PRX chronograph. Uh, you've got sapphire crystal, 100 meters of water resistance. But what you do have, which the T Tissot PRX doesn't have on the mechanical version, is a case size of 40 millimeters and a lug width of 20 millimeters. So this watch is going to wear much better on wrist than the Tissot PRX would be, unless you've got a larger wrist and you can accommodate for that size. The reference caliber is a H51, as I mentioned before, which is a mechanical movement, which I'm guessing is going to be based again on the Valjul movement that Tissot PRX also use. As always, I always say check the secondhand market, check Chrono24, Watch Finder and eBay. But I think, again, you can find this watch at a pretty decent price secondhand. You're sort of talking around £1,200 in the UK. So the last member of the Swatch group on this list, and believe me, it was very hard to include this one and not other ones within the list in fact it would have been really hard not to create a list just populated with swatch group uh, watches especially from the likes of tso and hamilton that have a lot of chronographs on here so we're actually looking at one of the more premium brands within the swatch group ladder we're looking at long jeans and there are a few ones to choose from but the one i've gone for is the long jeans heritage heritage classic chronograph Long jeans itself have an incredible history when it comes to chronographs, having worked a lot within aviation and partnering with people within aviation. And there are lots of different models to choose from, but I chose this because I feel that it is probably one of, if not the most attractive watch on this list today. I think the most attractive watch on this list today, bar one, which I will show you in just a moment. Um, but the Long Jeans Heritage Classic Chronograph retails at around £2,700 uh, to £2,800 in the UK. Again, the, you're looking at a 40 mil diameter watch. Uh, this one is an automatic movement, so it's again going to be a Valju movement. I'll double check when we look at the specs in a moment, with a thickness of 30 16.6 millimeters. Now in terms of specs this watch is very similar to the Hamilton and to the Tissot PRX but the one X factor this watch has is just how gorgeous this watch looks. You've got a white sort of silver dial with a black ring around it. You've got the two sub dials each side and then you've got these blue tones with the second hand and the sub dial hands as well and the tachymeter as well going around the outside um, of that watch and I think it just makes this watch look absolutely gorgeous. You've got a lovely piece of domed sapphire crystal with layers of anti-reflective undercoating as 
well. As I mentioned before, 40 mil case. It comes on a leather band, but you can customize which leather band that you want. Um, it is only water resistant to three bar. However, this is an everyday watch. It's not one that you would be sort of wearing to the beach. It's probably a good sort of shirt and tie Monday to Friday watch. And the lug the lug to lug or the lug sorry the lug width is 19 millimeters um so again you you're pretty much stuck with the straps um that you're getting from long jeans however i think the straps themselves are incredibly nice they're very supple and i have tried some long jean straps before and they've been pretty good on the wrist according to their website this watch is based on the wild parties of the later 1940s it definitely has a, a tuxedo vibe to it and i think it also has more more of a um, uh, one of those watches that you would see in a club, maybe in you know, a jazz band on somebody's wrist or something like that. And I just think this watch is is incredibly, it's just awesome. I think it looks fantastic. But the last bit on this long jeans before we move on to the next watch is it is an automatic watch, as we said before. It is powered by the Caliber L8. Nine five. Again, it doesn't say this is based on a valgeal movement. Um, I guess we'll have to do some more research into that. But it is a self-winding automatic movement. It beats at 28,800 vibrations per hour and has a 54-hour power reserve. So not the 60 hours. So it probably is a different movement or slightly modified movement. We are down to the last two watches on this list. And this next one may be a little controversial, but bear with me as what I'm trying to do with this list is not present to you watches that you should buy, but look at watches that are incredibly interesting and are definitely worth more time and your more attention. Now this brand is a relatively new brand. It is Maurice Larue. Um, it, when I say a new brand, it's been around since the seventies or the eighties, um, which in watch terms still makes it pretty new. Um, but it's from the Akon range and we're looking at the 44 millimeter chronograph watch. Now this watch definitely has strong AP vibes, if not a full out homage, but I'll let you decide whether you believe that or not. It comes in two different colorways. You've either got it with a blue uh, blue dial or a black dial. Um, I quite like the black dial. You can also get the dial itself on an integrated steel bracelet, a leather band or a rubber band. Again, I'll let you decide which one you would like. Um, however, that means that the prices will range from around £2,800 up to £3,100, depending on all the extras and everything that you get. So this watch, the Akon, is based on their best-selling model uh, from the 90s. Obviously, as I said before, it has a very strong AP style look to it. The case diameter on this watch is 44mm, stainless steel construction, 200 meters of water resistant. The dial itself is quite interesting. It's got black sunburst uh, dial and it has rhodium plated indices and hands as well. Um, stainless steel construction throughout, um, butterfly buckle uh, stainless steel clasp, which is typical when you've got an a integrated bracelet. The bracelet looks very highly manufactured as well. It looks like a five link bracelet. And I bet you with all the money that you would be spending on this watch, it probably will be as well. The movement, it doesn't stipulate what movement it is, uh, but it runs at 28,800 vibrations per hour, 48 hour power reserve with 25 joules. I'm guessing that's gonna be based on a valgeal movement or a Salita version of it at least. However, all those specs aside and the watch looks itself aside, the reason why I found this one quite interesting is because, again, depreciation on the secondary market, I seem to have been able to find version of this watch for almost half price. Uh, so if you're looking at a watch that's £3,000, you potentially could be looking at something £1,500. Um, so again, if you like the look of it, I think that potentially there's a good deal to be had there, especially on the secondhand market. The penultimate watch on this list today, and I think this watch offers incredible value value for money and it looks absolutely gorgeous as well. It is from Frederic Constant which is a subsidiary again of the citizen group of watches um, this is a swiss brand though it was a swiss brand it was acquired by the citizen group but it is still swiss made all the watches within their remit are swiss made but this one is a flyback chronograph and it retails for around three thousand five hundred pounds to get a flyback chronograph at this price point is absolutely insane. So off the bat, it already offers incredible value for money. You can currently get this watch in three different colorways. You've got an all white dial with a rose gold case. You've got a sort of chocolate dial with white sub dials with again, a rose gold face, or you've got stainless steel 
silver dial with a blue face sort of sunbursty with um, three silver what silver sub dials as well now my option of choice on here would either be the blue dial or the chocolate dial I think those the different colors on there offer incredible texture and house movement that they have it is the uh, FC 760 manufacture caliber which is a flyback chronograph with a date adjustable uh, by the crown hours um, you have 32 joules 38 hour power reserve and it beats at 28,800 vibrations per hour. Just like all the watches on this list, I would definitely recommend looking at the grey market, the secondary market, the eBay market, as well as re authorised retailers for this watch as well, because I think you can find some incredible value for money on this one. So it's a 42 millimeter case. It's got uh, 50 meters of water resistance, and you've also got this watch on leather straps as well so that's the only option you can get it is on a leather strap um, and I think the leather straps match the colors that you have so you can either get a blue I think a blacky brown or a black strap. I would venture to say this watch definitely has a Patek Philippe vibe about it when you're looking at it which is no bad thing at all with this watch but I do think as well it has a lot of an original design and it's very unique. Last watch on this list today that you should consider when buying a chronograph is the Tag Heuer Carrera the Calibre 16. Now I've talked about the Tag Heuer Carrera before it is one of my favourite if not the favourite line that I have of Tag Heuer. I'm not a massive Tag Heuer fan but I'm not a Tag Heuer hater. I just you know feel indifferent to their watches every so often i'll see a design that i think is quite nice so this watch is powered by the caliber 16 automatic movement it's a 41 millimeter case so again a slightly odd size case it has 100 meters of water resistance again sapphire crystal as you would definitely expect with the money that you're paying for this one this one is by far the most expensive watch on the list at 3700 pounds at retail again check the second hand markets and see what else you you can get for this um what else you can get for this chronograph as well very much inspired by racing this watch and again it sort of has a vintage type vibe to it it's 41 millimeter in size it's a very thick watch though it's 15.95 millimeter thick so actually 16 millimeter thick really has a 20 mil lug width um, fixed bezel sapphire crystal as we mentioned before and the case is more most likely steel and it's polished not brushed I think with Tag Heuer one of the things that you've got to consider is the value for money equation so I, I, I often think that they aren't great value for money first hand um, but if you were to find them in the second hand market so on eBay and places like that I think you can usually pick up a pretty good watch for a decent price obviously you've got other chronographs within the uh, Tag Heuer range as well such as the Formula One and you've even got its Aqua, Aqua Racers as well which have um, chronograph functions but my pick uh, for a watch that you should at least consider or try on when you're looking at chronograph watches would be the Tag Heuer Carrera. So to round off this list you have the Siegel 1963, the Oris Chronoris, the Tissot PRX Chronograph, the Hamilton Intramatic, the Long Jeans Heritage Classic Chronograph, the Maurice LaRue Acon Chronograph and finally the Frederick Constant Flyback Chronograph as well. All of these watches offer incredible value for money and all of them are interesting and unique watches. I tried to go as unique as possible with each of these selections. So there are other brands that I've missed out and I will go on to those in just a moment. Um, however, my personal choice out of all of these watches would be, oh, it's a bit of a toss up actually between the Longines Heritage Classic and the Frederick Constant uh, Flyback Chronograph my decision would be the frederick constant chronograph and it's very close and the reason why i've chosen the frederick constant is because of it is because of the flyback chronograph movement um i also think the designs are really nice and really elegant and i think it will fit really nicely within someone's collection and having the um 50 meters of water resistance so just that little bit more then the long jeans uh, heritage classic just makes it a little more hardy and a little more long lasting so that's the list today we have looked at 12 watches 12 watches at all different price points that you should definitely consider when looking at buying a chronograph what do you guys think do you think that you would 
probably just end up buying a Speedmaster anyway or a Chrono Black Bay anyway or have any of these watches inspired you or have you thought actually let's have a look at this one instead but I did say right at the start of this video that there will be a additional watch at the end and it's a wild card or an extra uh, or a bonus watch and so I thought I would talk about this very briefly and the reason why I put this as a bonus is because there's no particular model for this watch it's just depending on if you can find it and if you're happy going vintage now we'll get back to the video in just a moment but i need to take a few minutes of your time to talk to you about revolut i'm an affiliate of revolut but not just an affiliate of revolut banking i'm also a customer i've been using revolut banking for a few years now and it is for me the most perfect expense and investing app that i could hope for I have accounts set up in US dollars, Canadian dollars as my folks live there, euros and of course the not so great British pound but there are many more that you can choose from. All are relating to independent bank accounts uh, but they give you full control and access of your banking experience and including what currency you want to send and receive money in giving you the best value for money. But that's not all. Revolut also lets you invest in stocks and crypto, set up savings account and create disposable single use cards to be used along with your regular cards, making things such as online purchases for your next watch shop super secure. Revolut is simple and easy to use. And most importantly, it's completely free. Sign up today. Link in the description. Now let's finish off this video. So the brand that I am talking about today is Breitling and it's the Breitling Top Time watch. So it's one of their flagship uh, chronograph watches. Breitling, arguably the king of chronograph watches within the horology space. And if you're looking at watches and you're happy to look at vintage watches, you can have a look at at uh, watches from the 60s all the way up to the modern day and they tend to fluctuate in price dependent on the dials type and the um, affordability and the desirability of that sort of watch. So you've got grey dials, you've got black dials, you've got blue dials, you've got panda versions, you've got reverse pandas and they can range anywhere from a thousand pounds all the way up to five thousand pounds dependent on the model that you're looking for. You've also got different case sizes as well so you've got circular cases, you've got oval cases and you've actually got something that I find really interesting which is a cushion style square case which you can either get in stainless steel, stainless steel silver or you can get it within gold as well or a gold sort of plated version and that one tends to be one of the cheaper versions that you can get is the um, square gold plated version um, at around £1,000 to £1,500. Breitling also have an incredible USP on this list as well. They are the only watch brand uh, that have featured on the wrist of James Bond. It was featured on the wrist of Sean Connery in the film Thunderball and it was the top time that he wore. It was a very older version of the top time but it was the one that had a Geiger counter um, where he was able to find whatever uh, MacGuffin that the bad guy had in that particular film. I can't remember but I think I need to watch Thunderball again actually. But this watch is a bonus on this list for a reason. It is incredibly hard to find good watches. The prices are all over the place. And you, there's always a danger when you buy vintage that you could buy a watch that unfortunately breaks down or doesn't work the way that it should. I'm not great at buying vintage. My wife is. That's why I have a few vintage watches within my collection. Um, it's not my forte. My wife is fantastic at that. Um, but if you can find one at a good price, if you inspect it, I would probably recommend that you go and inspect it before picking it up. But if you can find a watch that looks pretty good within the Breitling range, then you have a premium watch design on your hand and you have an incredible piece of horological history as well. So properly this time, that is the list. That is everything that I've mentioned today. All of the chronographs that I feel that you should have a look at if you are interested in buying a chronograph watch, aside from some of the really big numbers and the really big models that we all know and love in the market today. Guys, what do you think of this list? Do you agree with anything? Do you like the watches that I put on today? Do you like the extra of the uh, Breitling as well? If you have any comments, leave them below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to this video. I'll have links in the description, not just to the websites that I've used today, but I'll also have a link to my Instagram and there'll be other links as well. Guys, thank you for watching. Uh, take care and I will see you in a future video.